So, um, hello everybody and really brilliant to have you all along to our Girl About Travel Club Extravaganza weekend. I'm really pleased this morning to be joined by Rob Lewis-Jones from Visit Wales. He's the international PR executive there. Um, hello Rob, thanks for joining us. How are hi you? Rebecca, good morning, how are you this morning? Yeah, really good, thank you. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah. really pleased that we're, we're finally here, getting on with this. It's been a long time in the planning. Exactly, uh, getting everybody out and about again to travel and see the wonderful country that we've got in Wales anyway. Completely, yeah. How's, um, how has the re-emergence been for you? Kind of how is the, you know, it feels like people are coming out of their shells again and that sort of thing. How's it been? Exactly, especially now because a lot of people are doing a lot of staycations, etc. So Wales is getting good brunt of that in terms of, you know, it's helping the economy because people are staying at home and want to travel in their own country. Um, which I think for some people is great because some people most probably have, have jetted off to different places, but I've always thought, oh, I don't explore my own country enough. And I think this has given a brilliant opportunity for people to do that. Um, sadly, it's, it's in the way it has happened, but it's brilliant because people <laughs> are going out and exploring their own country or going that further afield, actually, it's within Britain. So it's brilliant, actually. Um, and obviously, on our part, a lot of hotels, etc., are, are saying that the, the increase in business is brilliant, etc. Obviously, there are restrictions in place, and we have to abide by those. But I think, in terms of um, people having holidays, staycations, it's absolutely amazing because you're getting to learn about more about your history, your heritage, your culture that's all on your doorstep. So it's a brilliant way to discover your country. It's fantastic. I mean, that's what we wanted to talk about this morning. You know, just staycations the wonderful options that are on our doorstep we are so lucky exactly i think you're right so many people have gone actually i've almost got like a bucket list of places here that i'm too busy i'm you know too distracted by going off to france or wherever and actually exactly yeah, yeah a lot of people mention to sort of say if, you, if you're talking to friends or family or visitors oh if you go and visit such a place make sure you go up and visit this 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 but actually you've never done it yourself so yeah. I think it's now is the case that oh wow we're here we 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 can't go anywhere let's go and do it so we've actually can um, I'm always um, very pro in telling people to go and experience it rather than just look on a website to see what it, the website will tell you it, I find a website will tell you it's a bit like an estate agent's window you yeah. get to see the picture but you don't get to see what's behind that picture so yeah. going out there and seeing and breathing and tasting and feeling and all that is actually brilliant things to do yeah. Definitely. Because, um, I mean, massive overview, generalisation of Wales, but everyone's heard of Snowdon, Gower Peninsula. Um, where is sort of top of your list to, where do you go to visit to escape the crowds and kind of see um, a different side to Wales? Well, obviously in Wales, there's so much things to offer for every taste, et cetera, as well. So um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, if you want to come experience South Wales, West Wales, North Wales, it's, it's there's vast amounts and mm. um, for me personally I love sort of the southern part of Snowdonia being biased because that's where I'm originally from and um, it's very tranquil and there's a lot of sights and scenes to see there but I also like the coastal towns around um, Pembrokeshire um, St David's the smallest city in Britain happens to be a big favourite of mine and I love escaping there just going out and walking in the coastal path sometimes mm. you can walk for miles and you don't see anybody and up in a few sheep and wild horses etc um, but for me, that is absolutely brilliant. It's a great way to escape from the hustle and bustle of life, basically, just to go to those little places that are undiscovered and where you can just feel alone on yourself. And I think within what we've been through this year in terms of lockdown, mm. it's brilliant to come out into the countryside and go out and breathe the nice, clean, fresh air and see the open countryside rather than being stuck in your homes, etc. So... For me, it's it's going off to that beaten track, basically, and, and going to the, find those undiscovered places. And what do you, I guess you've obviously got a, lo a lot of your own knowledge that's built up, but where would you recommend people go to for to find those sort of places? Well, definitely one of those would have to be the Wales Coast Path. It's um, over 180, 100, sorry, over um, 870 miles worth of coastline around Wales. So that is an ideal place to go and visit mm -hmm. and you'll be passing through some very small towns and villages um, etc and some rather big cities as well like Cardiff for instance um, so whatever your tastes are plus if you want to go out and discover 
going on the Wales Coast Path, seeing the sea what on your right, and then you get to see the countryside or the city on your left. Um, whatever your likes and interests are, that would be brilliant. Even just coming across a small little fishing village, for instance. Um, but one thing I must have to stress, make, make sure you're self-distancing and abiding by the COVID rules. Of course, at all times. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, actually, um, I just wanted to, you've um, created a lovely um, uh, campaign video, um, which I just wanted to show everyone. Hopefully the tech will be super cool. I'll stop talking. Lockdown gave us a chance to slow down, to pause, to appreciate this corner of the world that we call home. It reminded us of the things we hold dear. They brew and beat our community and our world. And as we dip our toes in the sea, dust off our walking boots, or set out on an epic adventure, let's make a promise together to look after each other care for our communities, to protect this epic land. Other, make your promise to Wales. Oh, that video makes my, <laughs> makes my time. Yeah, it's quite heart-wrenching, isn't it, actually? It's really beautiful, yeah. <laughs> So what's the, uh, what was the thinking behind the campaign? What, um... Well, um, the campaign uh, mostly is to get people to introduce the pledge by asking people um, within and outside of Wales um, to other, and other um, translated means um, promise. Um, so it's a Welsh word, other. Um, so it's people to come together and to promise to make the pledge in terms of COVID-19 to sort of um, be kind to each other and self-distance and so on and so on and so forth. So it's reminding people of what we're going through, but mm. also to go out and experience Wales, but obviously putting that pledge in place to um, abide by the rules, as it were. So that's what the whole campaign in a nutshell is. It's quite a simple one. So mm. we're encouraging people to come to visit Wales, come and explore, but putting that promise in place that you will abide by the COVID rules, etc. Okay. So it's it's quite a, a simple one, but and hopefully it'll um, resonate. And a lot of people will come and visit and by by the rules as well. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to be that guy sitting in the um sitting in the camper van reading the book. I was like, oh. exactly, exactly. And part of this as well, um, part of the pledge as well. If you go onto the Visit Wales website um, and look at the um, the promise, the pledge, um, you can sign up to it. And by signing it, you are. Um, signing up to say yes I promise to abide by the rules etc so yeah please um, all the listeners and viewers go and um, yeah. visit Wales website and have a look and sign up to the pledge. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so um, when people are visiting Wales how do you suggest do you have any ways that they to for them to get the most make sure they're getting the most out of a trip there what do people need to know before they arrive that sort of thing um, well, obviously, going back to COVID-18, about buying me the rules, et cetera, with, with that, so that's, that that's, um, resonates in everybody's visit to anywhere they go na nowadays. Um, but what I would say coming into Wales, make sure you experience the, the culture, the local culture that you're going to experience, the local area you're going to, to visit. Um, delve into the rich history, heritage and culture that Wales has to offer. Um, it's everything for everybody's taste. So you're coming in to sort of experience our wonderful food, our beautiful landscapes, um, going to visit um, attractions, for instance, historic sites, etc. But obviously <laughs> making, making sure that you um, look if uh, they're open, etc. before you visit, because obviously some places are, are still in, in, uh, closed. But um, what I would suggest to people coming to, to Wales, come and experience, and just, just come and experience Wales as a destination. Come and experience what Wales has to offer in terms of our rich Welshness and, and because we are very unique and we are a little bit unique from what the rest of Britain has to offer because we have a very own language and history and heritage and beautiful landscapes. So 
Yeah, I could talk about it all day, but it, it's 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 amazing place. I'm being biased, but it is an absolutely amazing place. You you have to be biased. That's absolutely fine. You mentioned the food. What sort of food? Um, well, sort of again, food in Wales is absolutely superb. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, products out there. If you want to come and experience some fine Welsh gin, to um, experience some lovely Welsh yogurts or cheeses and breads and so on and so forth. Um, wherever you go within Wales, within a sort of a, a five mile radius, uh, um, you're going to find a delightful array of, of food pro products out there and drink, for instance. And even if you're staying at local hotels and bed and breakfast, etc., you're guaranteed that on the menu we'll be finding fresh local produce from there as well. Um, there are places, obviously, bearing in mind you have to check if they're open, they're doing tours, if you want to go on gin distillery tour or whiskey tour. <laughs> yes. I would recommend them, definitely. Um, and even going, for instance, if you're on, uh, on the Isle of Anglesey, we have um, our very own seed salt, Alan Morn, for instance. Um, you can go and experience how that is made, etc. Um, or even go mussel picking or um, go foraging. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so whatever your tastes are like, there's something there for every palate. Wonderful. And in terms of the history, are we mainly talking lots of castles or are there... What else? I mean, yes, there's definitely there's definitely a few castles in Wales, isn't there? There's one or two. I think the last count was about over 600 castles we've got in Wales. And what's quite unique about some of them, you can actually stay at some of them. Some of them have changed and, and gone into um, accommodation, whether it be service accommodation or if you want to stay in a nice five-star luxury hotel. So, um, you know, there's a vast choice there. So if you just want to be a knight for the day and experience as you did as a child running around, so yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Some of them are free entry. So if you are coming to Wales on a budget, obviously you can just go and visit some of these <laughs> sites which are free, which is absolutely brilliant as well. Um, but there are some that you can visit, but obviously are closed at this period of time because you have yeah. to go yeah. into an inside space. Um, but yeah, there's a vast amount of history, heritage and culture within Wales. Um, but yeah, at this current time, I would just come and explore. And even if you're just coming in to sort of have, um, going to a local town, village, and just meeting the locals, self-distancing, of course, but um, just, to, and it's amazing what a local can tell you that, more, that no textbook or Google can tell you about the local area, what there is to see, do, and discover, basically. So if you do happen to be in a, in a local town or village, and you're at a little pub, um, you know, start talking to the locals and um, you'll get to learn a lot that more than textbook can ever tell you. You're right, we don't do people enough, do we? we no, etc. And I think this is what um, COVID has done. People are coming on more of um, staycations, etc. Mm -hmm. And they're going to the places they've always wanted to go or never had been or discovered places they never knew they would discover. And like I say, there's no nothing better than just staying somewhere and going for a drink or whatever and just meeting the local and you know you get to learn so much about the area and it gives you a bit of a, bit of a buzz about the area that you're visiting and hopefully you'll go home and tell people oh I went here went there etc we met such and such a person and they recommended we went here and we did so a whole story evolves around that and they're just spreading the word so um, mm -hmm. that's what I'd like to see people do. yeah no definitely friendlier more talking um, we talk about being uh, we like to try and be savvy staycationers. Um, are there any particular initiatives that Visit Wales is running that um, our viewers and, member and Travel Club members should know about? Um, yes, like I mentioned um, just a moment ago about people being savvy in terms of their tr travel, etc. Um, there's a lot of deals out there at the moment to look out for as well. And as mentioned, there's a lot of free attractions to look out as well. Yes. So, yeah. Um, like I mentioned, for the instance, the castles that you can go visit, there's a lot of it um, that are open air at the moment. There are a few uh, open air attractions just outside Cardiff, for instance, where you can go to the St. Fagans um, National History Museum. Um, and that will give you sort of uh, an in-depth um, insight into the history and heritage of culture of Wales. But again, it's, it's an open air site and um, that's a mm -hmm. free entry. So for, for, for savvy travels, I would look definitely look out for offers. Mm -hmm. and also um, look out for those free attractions as well. And where better than a free attraction or place to visit, I have mentioned the walking in Wales, and you can be coming on your bike in Wales, go cycling in Wales, for instance. Oh, fantastic. Um, it's all free. 
So yeah. to go around our amazing uh, Wales Coast Path and just to um, go walking around the actual three national parks that we have and even go on cycling routes around Wales, it's all free. So all you have to do is put your walking boots in the back of the car or hitch up the bike and away yeah. you go. You've got a free holiday in terms of during the day. And, you know, um, it, it's brilliant. So the, the countryside and what has to offer is free. So ideal. Tell me, the, um, tell me the names of the three national parks you've got. We've got Brecon Beacon National Park. And then up in North Wales, we've got Snowdonia National Park. And then over in West Wales, we've got Pembrokeshire National Park. Oh, okay. All of which offering a very, very different and unique experience. Yeah, so for people who might not know what each one offers, how would you sum, sum each of them up? Oh, good question. Um, for instance, if you're interested in the walking um, and it's more rugged area, I would definitely go up to Snowdonia and the landscape there is truly amazing. And then coming up into sort of um, mid Wales for Brecon Beacons, etc. That's mm -hmm. brilliant for going mountain biking and walking, etc. as well through forest trees and things like that. And then obviously if you go down to Pembrokeshire, again, that's more of a coastal national park. So if you want to discover more of the coast, the sea and everything like that, that would be the area to go to. So that all three are totally different in terms of the landscapes they have to offer. But all three are amazing. That sounds like a <laughs> Um, multi-tour you know three destination definitely if even if you're just looking for a weekend away um like let's go and explore uh, Brecon Beacons this weekend or let's go and so next weekend we'll go off to Snowdonia and then we'll travel all the way down down to Pembrokeshire and discover yeah. three, as you've done three national parks all within Wales so over three weekends so you know your staycation is getting a bit more savvy in terms of your national parks Yes, definitely. And the um, the coast as well. I'm a big fan of the beaches. I remember holidays when I was little at um, near just around the in Pembrokeshire, just around the corner from St David's. Um, and I've just got very fond memories of the beaches there. What other fantastic beaches should I go explore further up the coast? Definitely. Um, as mentioned, we've got 870 miles of coastline within Wales and each and every destination is quite different and it, it all depends on what your likes and dislikes are. Um, mm. Whether you want to go and example the lovely Aberaidon, for instance, on the coast there with a nice beach and you can have a honey ice cream. Or if you, if you just wanted to go and, um, up to sort of like Black Rock Sands around um, Port Maddox for some quiet tranquility, for instance or if you wanted the lovely sandy beaches up on along the North Wales coast and experience the pier in San Didno, just walking there with an ice cream. Um, mm. it, it is so much to offer. For instance, if you just want a nice, nice coastal walk in the Isle of Anglesey, going over to Clandwyn Island up to the um, patron saint of Welsh Lovers Island. Um, again, that is quite... Um, uh, <laughs> Anglesey, is it? That's on Anglesey and it's called Sandwin Island um, and it's where our patron saint of Welsh lovers used to live, Santes Dwynwen. Um, so we celebrate that on the 25th of January as opposed to the rest of Britain and the rest of the world celebrating St Valentine's Day on the 14th we celebrated on the 25th. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a lovely walk and uh, again it's free so um, <laughs> ideal. Is that where the Welsh love spoons come from as well? Well, kind of. It's, it doesn't actually come from there. They, they, it's an old Welsh tradition, the Welsh love spoon is, because years and years and years ago, um, the, if, some, if a gentleman fancied a lady, um, he would carve a Welsh love spoon to show his love for her, and then the links, etc., would, would progress within that love spoon. So it was a bit of a, a favour to show your affection towards somebody. Um, Whereas this day is just like get on a text or whatever or on an app or whatever. So it was the sort of the modern day app thing to do. <laughs> oh, um, well, um, oh, it sounds, yeah, it sounds so many places, fabulous places we need to get visiting right away. Um, where is your, where's on your wish list for autumn and winter this year? Where, where's your... Oh, goodness me, there's a question and a half. Um, and you know, right there? I've obviously lived in Wales for very, mem very, uh, all my life basically. So um, there's lots of places I've not been to and I want to discover as well. Um, but in terms of we're coming into the autumn winter season now, um, obviously I'm going on about the lovely walks you can do. And there's nothing better than going hill walking in the, in the, in winter time, etc. 
etc when it's nice and crisp and fresh outside and going and then finishing off in a nice lovely country pub with a nice glass of ale etc um or a gin and tonic um so for me i would bring again just going off those beaten tracks and um, just going to discover the smaller towns and villages but even if you want to as well come up and discover our city uh, for instance um there's lots of offers in the, the cities around wales as well and you can have a lovely um vacation just coming for a long weekend or a midweek break etc so yeah come and experience the towns and that's the true that's the thing about cardiff isn't it? Others in particular, but the um, but Cardiff being so close, it feels like it's so close to the countryside as well. So you're oh, totally within ten minutes, you're out in the countryside from, from Cardiff, for instance. And if you're in the city centre, like a ten minute walk, you're down into Cardiff Bay. You're right by the sea there as well. Absolutely superb. There's a vast amount of accommodation, great restaurants, and um, great sort of history and heritage to come and discover. So if you wanted like a city break. I'd recommend that as well. Um, but obviously, there's lots of towns and villages, to, et cetera, to visit as well. Um, but like I mentioned, going out there, walking and discovering different places. Um, yeah, so just look out for all these offers there and um, sign up to the Ava Pledge and come and visit us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when, um, just one last question as well, just looking ahead to like spring, summer next year, thinking about um, sort of summer holidays and family summer holidays. Where would you be recommending to go? Um, I mean, we've got Pembrokeshire, obviously, haven't we? But and the Gower as well, or obviously you've got Gower and Pembrokeshire. But obviously, bearing in mind as well, if you, especially if you're looking for family holidays, there's always sort of the lights of the Brecon Beacons as well, and going up into the heart of Snowdonia, for instance. Um, especially for families, there's a vast amount of things to do. Whether children want to go to visit the castle or go on steam trains, um, etc. There's lots of outdoor adventure places as well for kids to go to. Um, and then bring, bringing the bikes as well, etc. So there's a vast amount to do um, in terms of the areas that you want to visit. Mm, okay, fantastic. All right, I'm making plans. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time, Rob. It's really great to talk um, and hear. Yeah, you've, oh, yeah, it's been really nice and relaxing. Feels like I feel relaxed just even talking about Wales. Yeah, so. more than welcome. And then just hope all your listeners and viewers will come and visit Wales. You know, there's a vast amount of accommodation to choose from if you just want to go camping with your two-man tent to sing a five-star luxury yeah and, uh, and for the best resource is it is it just to visit the visit wales website yeah. visit the visit wales website visit wales.com and um, there's a vast amount of information on there and from there look for the other pledge as well and also look at government um guidelines as well in terms of covid because um, Wales is very different from the rest of Britain as well because we've all you know, we've got our own different rules etc so it's well worth people looking at those before they travel as well yeah um, well thank you Rob okay you're more than welcome for watching as well and um, thank you Rob for your time and yeah we'll we'll be back with more inspiration later thanks